fresh wild salmon and trout. These are some of our favorite fish to catch and eat. Fresh fish is the best, but as much as we'd like to, we are not out there catching fish every week. So aside from freezing them, we have other methods of preserving the fish that we catch. We are going to show you every step of the preserving process from the stream to our belly. We are surrounded by lakes and streams in our area and we like to take advantage of that to catch our own fish to eat. Our favorite fish to catch in the spring and fall are salmon and trout. The fishing is exciting and the meals are delicious. We also catch all kinds of other fish species like perch, walleye, bass, smelt, brook trout, and lake trout. This video is all about how we pressure can and smoke a year's supply of lake run salmon and rainbow trout. We have a nice, fresh, springtime rainbow trout out of Lake Superior. This fish was bled out immediately after being caught. This is very important in having the highest quality of meat that you can get out of these fish. Just slice the gills as soon as you catch it if you're going to keep the fish. Let it bleed out it'll lose all of its blood pretty quickly. I've already gutted it. I've already removed the head, so all that gross stuff is done. What we have to do now is remove the fins and cut this up into steaks. So I'm gonna start just by removing these fins. These are pretty big fins. You wanna get those big bones out of there. There's one of the fins. Bone runs all the way up into there. Another fin on this side. Same deal. And the dorsal fin is a little trickier to get out of there. Just going to take our fillet knife right in the top at the front of that fin. Just cut down towards the back. We'll do the same thing on the other side. It's loosened up nicely now. A little piece of skin there. We'll just score in the front here. Take some pliers. You want something that's got teeth on the pliers so that you can really grip that fin. Just grab onto it and pull. And that fin, that dorsal fin, will come right out of the fish. Now we have to cut this up into steaks. We like to use half pint, 250 milliliter, wide mouth mason jars to can the fish. You're going to want to cut your steaks about the depth of the jar, leaving a small amount of headspace in the jar. Sometimes the spine on these guys can be kind of tricky to get through, so you might need a slightly heavier knife. There's our first steak there. And we will work our way back down to the tail. aside for a second here. We'll pop these steaks into the jars just as they are. You don't have to remove the scales. You don't have to remove any bones or anything like that. Everything will dissolve in the pressure canning process. And 
And we'll just clean up the jars a little bit. Get any of that stuff off the sides and off the rim. Now you could add a teaspoon of salt into each one of these jars if you wanted to. You could add some lemon, you could add some jalapeno peppers, anything you want. But this is ready to go as it is. Using new lids. I always recommend using new lids in your canning. Some people like to reuse theirs. We do save ours just in case we need them. And just put the lid on there finger tight. Some people are bothered by seeing the skin in their canned fish. I don't see the problem with it, but you can basically cut it in half and expose only the flesh so that the skin is on the inside. I don't see the point in doing this extra step. Seeing that nice silver skin does not bother me really at all. We're doing two fish today. So I have a baker's dozen of jars. Just space them out evenly. Be doing two layers. So I'll put this rack in. Put the other six jars on top. Our canner requires three quarts of water. Yours might be different. So be sure to follow the instructions for your canner. We'll pop the lid on. We'll start getting this up to temperature. And in the meantime, we'll start preparing the tails for smoking. There's still a decent amount of meat on the tails here, which you could cut up and can, but we like to smoke these. And to do that, we're just gonna fillet them right off here. Just like so. And we'll smoke these with the skin on. It just helps to keep the whole fillet together so it's not falling apart in the smoker. This is a dry brine mixture. It's 50-50, the maple sugar that we make, and coarse sea salt. If you don't have maple sugar, that's perfectly fine. You can just use brown sugar. Brown sugar and sea salt, 50-50 mixture. This is the dry brine for the smoked fish. We're just going to layer on the bottom here, first of all. We're going to put the fillets in, skin side up. We'll get some more brine on top of these. Get these guys completely covered up. And we'll put the next two fillets in here. Right on top, just like that. Completely cover these in more of the salt and sugar mixture. This is going to help pull a lot of moisture out of the fish. And we will put that in the fridge and you'll see how much moisture gets pulled out of these fillets. All right, this has been venting for about 10 minutes now. So I'm gonna put the top on. We're gonna let this get up to 11 PSI. That's the pressure that we need here. Your pressure might be different. We are at 11 PSI. Just going to make an adjustment on the heat on the stove, turn it down a little bit. Now we're going to set our timer for 100 minutes at 11 PSI. It has been 100 minutes. Time to turn the stove off and we will let this come down in pressure entirely and cool off before we open it up. These have been in the brine for about 24 hours. It's time to take them out. I'm gonna give them a quick little rinse. You can see how much liquid has been pulled out of the fish. I'm gonna give these a quick little rinse 
And then these are going to dry for a few hours before going into the smoker, just to form the pellicle, which will really help with the smoke flavor. So these will just be allowed to dry until they are completely dried out, and there might be a little bit of a sticky coating on the outside of them. All right, these are nicely dried out now. We have a very nice pellicle that is formed. Perfect. It's time to get them into the smoker. I'll also be basting these with a maple and garlic mixture. Really sweeten them up. Make them nice and sticky. These will be in here for two, maybe three hours, and I'll baste them about every 30 minutes throughout that time. The trout tails are done. These look just perfect. What would you prefer? A flip-flop or some trout? Both. We've managed to almost entirely eliminate the grocery store for our fish needs. Seafood from the ocean, on the other hand, it's over a thousand kilometers away, so we still buy some of that when we want some treats, maybe some lobster, some tuna, something like that. We have catch and possession limits on most species here, which is something we have no problem with following in order to keep future generations healthy for both the fish populations and people. So get out there, catch some fish, can them up, Smoke them and enjoy. Mm. Let's have a fish sandwich. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>